Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ZeroAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Zero Automation weekly video series. And today we are going to talk about is record and playback in automation testing a better approach? If not, why? That's what we're going to be discussing in this video. We have been seeing all these different tools available in the market, some of the most popular automation testing tools like Catalan Studio, Selenium, Test Cafe, Test Project or UFT or maybe Tricentis Tosca. You can see all these different open source as well as commercial automation testing tool does have something called as record and playback tools available within their own product. And we have also seen some of the artificial intelligence enabled tools available in the market something like Mabel or testim.io or Functionalize or maybe test.ai. So all these different tools also have something called as record and playback and they do heavily support or maybe relay a lot on the record and playback uh, options available within them. So why is this tools and why are these companies are really doing uh, something called as record and playback and we always feel like record and playback is not that great or important. So we are going to be discussing about that in this video. But the question is, do we really require a record and playback and why is it really used for? So if you go to your colleague or maybe to your community friend, somebody who is, and then if you ask like, what is this record and playback option and how it's been used? So the first answer they'll be giving you is, record and playback is an option available in automation testing tools, which is used for uh, a no wise user or maybe for those who really don't know what is programming. Well, if you have heard this answer from one of your colleagues, you are not alone. You are the one of the million of guys like me who have heard the same answer many times. And there are some other common uh, answers that you may be getting, not just these answers. Some of the most commonly heard answers from the community or maybe uh, your friends and colleagues will be this. Record and playback cannot be used for larger projects. We cannot do a lot of customization in code which we can achieve with Selenium or with the rest of tools with hand coding. It is mostly for those who have less or no programming background, or it can be used for simple flows of application, but complex flow will eventually fail as it does require a lot of sequences. It is hard to maintain the code and it becomes flaky in course of time. And working with the dynamic objects will become a problem with these record and playback. So you can see that these are some of the most common answers that you'll be getting from your colleagues or maybe from the community. With these common answers in place, let's do a realistic comparison with hand coding in terms of record and playback. So we are going to be discussing about that now. You can see people will be saying like record and playback cannot be used for larger project. We really agree that larger project can be maintained much easily, but designing the Record and playback with multiple chunks of test cases can still make it possible to work with larger project. Even though there seems to be certain pitfalls, it can still be overcome as well. And the another uh, answer that you'll be getting is, we cannot do a lot of customization with record and playback. Well, you can see that these days, all the different tools available in the market, something like Catalan Recorder, Test Cafe IDE, Sahi Pros and Test Project. So these tools allow a lot of customization. They do support something called as exporting recorded code to their respective IDs for further customization. So if you have seen any one of the tools available in the market, something like Catalan Recorder or Test Cafe, you always have an option called export. So if you click that particular export options, you can export the code to any different language that you're looking for. So you're not going to be something like a specific language oriented guy you can be language agonistic with these tools as well. So if you are good in C-sharp, you can export the code to C-sharp language binding. Or if you are good in Java or JavaScript, you can still export the code to JavaScript or Java as, as your choice of language. So these options are available out of the box within these kinds of test recorders. And this is going to be very, very handy while you do a little bit customization of your code, something like as we saw in our previous video, if you feel like there are some buttons which is clicked accidentally, and if you want to modify that instead of doing that in the UI, you can still do that in the code 
and once you get hand with that particular kind of codings eventually after some times you know how to delete it you know how to modify that code and in some point of time you can still do a lot of customization of the code with the help of record and playback options similarly record and playback does support data driven testing with csv or json file it supports external scripts and support of add-ons is also available with tools like test project and also record and playback people say that it is mostly for those who have less or no programming background well that's true yes but you can still export the recorded code out from these IDEs and customize the code as much as you want and even in some IDE supports page object model coding structure which makes things even more easier to understand and customization as well as with hard coding is much much easier in the record and playback tools so you can see that it is not just limited for programming language knowledge because whatever we are doing from the exported code is basically something that you're going to be just copy pasting the code and modifying the identifiers and then you're going to be running the code again either by importing the code within the IDE or maybe running directly from the IDE that you have something like Catalan Studio or maybe Test Cafe something like that so you can do all those jars using the exported code so there is nothing called programming language that you really require because for now everybody as you know the testers are aware of uh, programming not a lot at least like a developer or maybe a complete full-blown automation test engineer but they do have some knowledge on how to do little bit codings and all those stuffs and then it can be used for a simple flow of application but complex flow will eventually fail as it does require a lot of sequences well we can still use it for complex flow again it depends on how good we design our record and playback code to work with since these tools does support features such as data driven testing uh, which is used for complex flow as well and record and playback people say that it is really hard to maintain the code and will become flaky in course of time well that's exactly what happens with the coded test as well you might have seen that if you record everything with page object model and you do all those kind of different operation within the code and sometimes suddenly the developer says that there is some change in the UI so you go back to the code change all the identifiers and modify them and again you maintain the code it is not just in record and playback that you cannot maintain the code but you also have the same problem with the hand coding and in course of time you still have to maintain the code so it doesn't really mean that your automation code that you have hand coded is not going to be flaky at all it is flaky for sure but just that the way we are maintaining the code in the hand coding like with the continuous integration systems and all those stuff is not being done for the recorded code if we do that the same operation as like many different tools currently supports the CI CD pipeline within the record and playback tools you can still achieve the same operation that you can do with the hand coded codings and finally let's understand why these companies are really investing so much of money and time for the record and playback tool which we still consider as some of the most problematic area and we don't really have to use that so in order to understand this completely we have to even deep further into record and playback tools and understand what this record and playback tools are really doing and why it is really meant for so if you see any one of the tools which is launching Luni in the market we first do this record and playback options initially and we'll see that if this tool is really working fine as expected or is it really satisfying what we are looking for so record and playback is one place where you can fully understand how the application is actually working the automation testing tool is actually working in a complete nutshell and then the record and playback tools are not just for performing certain record operation the basic stuff you can also do a lot of different operation something like bulk data creation for example user creations you can test the page loading time by creating timer actions you can quickly do some smoke test and sanity test of deployed app and devops or manual testers can do automation testing as well it shouldn't be just a tester is writing the code if it is a hand coding because it's very very easy in record and playback tools who can do the quick record and run the test and similarly record and playback act as a wizard for testers to create the test script and instantly they gain access to the popular features within the tools such as cross browser testing parallel execution support screenshot with failures debug information passing test while fail 
and getting a nice automation testing report. So you can see that these are some of the options which if you want to achieve with the hand coding, you have to do so much of coding. For instance, parallel test execution, guys, we have seen this many times. If you want to maintain the parallel test, parallel test execution, you have to create your own web driver. You should not be static. It should be sharing that particular variable across your project and you should maintain the execution. Oh my God, that's really a headache if you do yourself. Whereas for a no eyes or for a person who didn't really have to do a lot of stuff for that, he can easily use a current playback. He can just change the options within the IDE and things will start working very very easily without even you have to do a lot of coding for that. So you can see the record and playback is really a cool stuff for doing all these different great operation even without a single line of code. And finally if you would have seen my video series on test project you can see that the test project is a completely record and playback IDE but still you can do some customization like creating add-ons and then you can export the uh, coded code within the particular test project portal and then you can use that within the record and playback as an action as a step and then you can extend the code these are some of the cool things you can do with record and playback and after looking at all these different options you can now come to a conclusion that yes that's why there is a benefit for record and playback and these companies are really investing so much of time heavily for record and playback because that really plays an important role within the automation testing. So if you see a recorder demo of Catalan Studio, you can see that it is a plugin of Chrome. And once I start doing and uh, typing something like google.com, all these actions are currently being recorded. Something like typing, and once I do a click operation, you can see that there is something called as command recorded being option coming over there on the right hand side of the screen. It shows like what are operations that I'm currently performing within the UI. So everything is being recorded and all the identifiers of identifying these particular URL like uniquely identifying this URL are being taken care within the IDE itself. So once all these record options are completely done, you can see that within my Catalan Studio Recorder IDE or the Record and Playback IDE, I can see that all these different options are being created. I can stop the recording and I can give a name for these test cases in just a matter of second. So you can see that this was very, very simple for me and I could able to do this operation much, much easier. Once I hit the play, you can see that it is going to perform the same operation for me much faster. Like you cannot even imagine that doing the same thing with coder test, it's going to take so much of time for you. And similarly, you can take a screenshot of failure, you can add variables, you can work with data-driven testing by adding some of the file from the JSON or CSV format. We can add extension scripts and we can add references. We can also increase the speed of the test execution and we can customize the options with Catalan Studio Recorder much easily. And this is exactly what I was talking about, like exporting the code with the different language bindings like Java, C Sharp or something like that. You can see all the codes are really created much easily with Catalan Recorder and these are all done much easily with Catalan Recorder. And the next tool that we're going to talk about is this Test Cafe. We have already seen about this Test Cafe story in our previous video and we also saw that we can create a record and playback much easier. And this time I'm going to click this run configuration and I'm going to choose a couple of browsers and then I'm also going to take, the, take a screenshot if the test fail and then I'm going to hit OK. And then if I run this test this time, I am going to select a failing test this time maybe so that it takes a screenshot. So once I hit the run execution button, you can see the test is currently running and it is going to spawn two browsers for us automatically. And they're running in parallel, by the way. And they are running test in Chrome as well as in Safari browser. You can see all these things are done automatically for us within these tools itself. Test Cafe is really, really awesome to do these operations for us much easily without even a hazel. And now you can see that this test is actually failing, by the way. So it is waiting for the element to appear. And for some reason, the element doesn't appear at all. And once I click this particular failing test, you can see I get a screenshot of the failure. And I can also get the logs and all those options within this test. So these are the options I will be getting with this Catalan Recorder as well as with the Test Cafe uh, Studio Recorder much easily. And these are some of the couple of tools that I have shown here. But there are many different tools like Ranorex or Coded UI Testing 
or test project this tool does exactly the same thing that we just saw in the demo and let's also discuss about the artificial intelligence based tools which are also doing exactly the same record and playback options that we have been looking something like Mabel, test.ai, testim and functionalize. So these tools also support the record and playback and they give the first class citizen option for the record and playback and then they do support the coder test as well. So they don't really entertain the coder test a lot because they fully rely on the record and playback. They really say that record and playback option is the one which they can really use for testing multiple different applications. And there are some reason for that. The reason is this, AI really covers some of the pitfalls that the traditional record and playback tool actually does not handle. And I guess a lot of different companies like Test Project and Catalan Studio are also working on creating the artificial intelligence for the problems that we're gonna be talking about. Some of the problems are these. They are gonna automatically heal the test failures by handling UI object changes. They are gonna automatically handle the dynamic objects, automatic integration with CI CD pipelines, and automatically triggering the test in a scheduled manner or during the app build changes. So you can see that these are some of the great options which are available within these artificial intelligence tools and they are going to be embedded within your recorded code with these options. So you can see you don't really have to write even a single line of code. That's the mantra for all these different uh, companies by using record and playback, no single line of code to be written and all these different heavy lifting operations are going to be taken care by these companies automatically for you, which is really, really cool. And now you can see that these record and playback plays a very, very key vital role for automation testing and not just the hand coding classical way of testing our applications. Well, now we talked a lot about record and playback. We completely supported about uh, record and playback and we now understood why the companies are really investing so much of time in record and playback. We, does all the, we did all the comparison with record and playback and with the hand coding. Now you should tell me what is that your company is really doing and how they are really leveraging the power of record and playback within your company for testing the application. I am for sure, personally, we are not really doing a lot of record and playback. We do record and playback for initial kind of testing. And once we are fully satisfied with the tools, once we do the POC, we don't do the record and playback for larger project. But still, for record and playback, we do it for something like the bulk data creation, user creations, and something like testing page load times and all those different options. The reason is because the object maintenance with the record and playback tool is a little complex than compared to the hand coding. But the advent of this artificial intelligence tool, I guess these problems are also going to be eradicated. And soon, I guess we may be transitioning towards these kinds of record and playback options, rather writing the code itself. And once again, please give me your comments and let me know what you think. So we can extend this discussion even further if you feel like we are still missing a lot of points that we have to discuss about. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.